Um, my nose is a little clogged up, and I have a bit of a dry throat, so I have a bottle of water here with me in case I need to drink. Um, I don't know, some weird sickness going around. It's like some something it was like season two, so, something like that. It's like season two something. I I don't remember, but like apparently uh, a whole bunch of people got it this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I just uh, I don't know. It's weird. I'm one of those guys. So you know, I mean, whatever. Um, tonight, today, for the next few ten uh, while videos, whatever, I'm going to be reading uh, Swayback Mountain, which was requested to me by I think it was Silent Kill Two One Seven, and I don't think that it's going to be so raunchy as the other ones. I think it's a bit more tame, and it's pretty much just shipping, so here we go. <coughs> Are you really sure you need all that stuff, Rarity? Applejack looked over the bulging saddlebags that the unicorn pony was carrying with difficulty up the sloping mountain path. We ain't going to one of those fashion shows, you know. Of course I know that, darling. Rarity was short of breath, and she kept shifting the saddlebags so that they would sit more balanced on her back. But, uh, when you said that you were planning to go to the Swayback Mountains, ha oh, oh, I just had to come with you. You see, frowned Applejack, I just don't get why you need to travel so far to collect berries. There's a whole forest of berries right next to Ponyville. But, ha <laughs> ha, the saddlebags which had been threatening to pull Rarity over were finally sitting correctly. But, darling, I already explained. I don't need just any old common berries. I need special berries that only grow in the Swayback Mountains. They're the only berries in all of Equestria whose juice is a perfect azure. And I just need that color dye for my latest range of accessories. Not that a pony is... She looked at Applejack up and down critically. Uh, close to Earth as you are, my dear. I would understand that. I understand plenty. Little Miss, everything has to be perfect. Applejack shook her head. I should have never told you that I was going to complete in the rodeo in Colt Springs, and that them Swayback Mountains was right on my way. Rarity sniffled. Well, seeing as how we're already climbing these beastly mountains, I suggest that we make a best of the bad situation. She broke into a trot and passed Applejack, who snorted in frustration. The indigo main unicorn pony was as much trouble as a barrel of Paris brides. Applejack was about to catch up with her when she heard a low rumble from behind them. She turned and saw a rank of black clouds being pushed into position by a squad of Pegasus ponies. She groaned and hit her head with her hoof. Now, how in tarnation did I forget that there was a thunderstorm planned for tonight? She broke into a trot, then a gallop. And as she sped past Rarity, who was already puffing from the thinner air of the mountains, she cried, You better put your running shoes on, little missy. There's a storm a-brewing, and it's coming right for us. Rarity looked back and cried out, Eep! She broke into a gallop as well as, as well, and was soon next to Applejack. I just would have to happen to have forgotten my raincoat, she complained. And now, with all this galloping, ugh, I'm getting absolutely coated in dust and perspiration. You sure are sweating like a prize, pig, Applejack laughed. Rarity said nothing, and merely turned her nose up in disgust at the vulgar comparison. To the south, in the skies over Ponyville, Rainbow Dash groaned in frustration. The Pegasus ponies were all pushing the dark clouds in the completely wrong direction, and things were getting out of hand. Clouds crashed against clouds, lightning flashed, thunder roared, and rain started soaking exactly the wrong parts of the countryside. That ditzy do, Dash muttered. This is the last time I let her organize a downpour. She jetted off to the area where ditzy do and several less experienced ponies were mashing together the smaller storm clouds, piling them up into a gigantic thunderhead. But Dash was too late to prevent disaster. It flashed with a sudden eye-shattering streak of errant lightning, and the thunder that followed rolled over the landscape like a shockwave. The rain started to fall, softly at first, and, beef squ and brief squalls that passed as swiftly as they came. The thunderstorm was still far off, but Applejack knew that it was going to be a huge one. Just what do those Pegasus ponies think they're doing? Applejack thought to herself, shaking her head in disbelief. They're just big old show-offs. Speaking of show-offs, she turned back to where Rarity was struggling to keep up with her. The unicorn pony's saddlebags were slowing her down, and her mane was wet with sweat as well as rain. Come on, princess, said Applejack. At this rate, we ain't gonna reach the river before nightfall. 
And I sure as apples don't want to camp where there's liable to be a landslide. Just, just, Rarity panted, rub, redoubling her efforts. Let me catch, uh, oh, my breath, uh, a moment. Applejack groaned, but she stopped to let Rarity catch up. As soon as we're over the rise, it'll be downhill. Rarity nodded, throwing a foreleg over Applejack's shoulders and leading Apple and leaning against the earth pony as she gasped for air. It may be that I huh, did pack a, a few too many items. Applejack looked at the bulging saddlebags. Just what did you pack? We're only going to be there for three days, tops. Well, said Rarity, her face no longer as flushed as before. There's three days worth of outfits, of course, and each outfit naturally needs a small selection of accessories to go with it, so that I'm ready for any kind of situation. And then there's my makeup box, and since I have no idea what kind of lighting to expect in Cold Springs, I simply had to bring all of my foundations so as not to be caught out. You see, Applejack, Rarity raised her nose in the air, and her face grew haughty. Not every pony can be as reckless and fly by the seat of your saddle as you are, my dear. I must be ready for every eventuality, or else I shall look ridiculous in front of any, every pony. And fashion death is quite simply the most dire of fates. She tossed her mane in emphasis. Applejack rolled her eyes in irritation. I can think of a dozen worse things than looking at the foal in front of others. Being struck by lightning or swept away by a raging torrent being foremost from the mind of my moment. She gestured towards the approaching black thunderhead of blue haze and torrential rain beneath it that was sweeping across the landscape towards them. Now let's get going. Not long after they reached the ridge top, but the path down the mountainside was almost invisible now. The sky was covered in cloud and twilight spread over them. And <laughs> twilight sparkle, hee <laughs> hee. Applejack led the way, gingerly testing every new ledge of rock to make sure it was safe. When Rarity stood close behind her. Don't follow quite so close, warned Applejack, or else we'll both end up on the bottom of this mountain a mite faster than we'd expect. Rarity stopped abruptly. Some scree loosened under her hooves, fell away down the mountainside, and she jumped back with a yelp. The rocks fell for several heartbeats and cl clattered ominously somewhere far below. What did I tell you? Rarity moaned. I don't think I can go on, she sobbed. I can't see a thing. Applejack flashed in anger. You gotta go on, Missy! Elsa Rain will catch up with us, and these rocks will be slippery as well! Rarity closed her eyes and swallowed. She nodded. Very well. Let's go on, then. Progress was slow, but with Applejack's sharp cajoling and the threatening peals of thunder that came sooner and sooner after the flashes of lightning that gave birth to them, Rarity found the courage to go on. They were almost at the bottom of the mountain. Beneath the, them, the river that flowed down the mountains and across the plains to Colt Springs became visible, appearing as a sinuous cobalt gray path with every flash of lightning. Just a small ways left now, Rarity, said Applejack. Then a quick gallop across the bridge, and we'll be on the other side, and we can make camp under one of those rockety outcrops. Rockety. Oh, thanks, Celestia, cried Rarity. I simply cannot wait to be out of these wet and sticky saddlebags. Let's hurry up. And, but in her haste to move off, her, the unicorn's pony hoof came down too hard on a rock hidden in front of her by the wet mud. She slipped backwards, landed on her side, and started sliding perceptuously down the path. Rocks and mud came away with her, and Applejack had no time to react as the muddy unicorn pony and part of the mountain went side struck her and knocked her off of her feet. Together, spattered in mud and screaming, they careened down the path, dislodging more stones and mud as they went. Three heartbeats later, they reached the bottom, but they didn't stop. Close to the river, the mud was even deeper, and although they were both able to right themselves, they kept sliding, their hooves skating across the bank. And then with a colossal splash, they were in a bitterly cold they were in the bitterly cold water of the river. Applejack surfaced first, coughing and sputtering. Rarity Rarity she cried out, but her friend was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, Rarity surfaced near her. She was coughing as well, dazed but uninjured. Come on, little missy, said Applejack, taking hold of Rarity's saddlebags in her mouth and pulling her towards the opposite bank. Swim harder. I can't swim, Rarity cried. I can only pony paddle. Then pony paddle as hard as you can. Several desperate minutes later, they were on the other side of the stream. It was so muddy here, and Applejack pulled Rarity from the water onto the wet, onto the wet sand. The unicorn pony coughed up some more water, but she managed to raise her head and smile at Applejack. Applejack's eyes flashed with anger. Wait, oh, smile at Applejack. Rarity's eyes were moist from tears, river, water, and rain. Oh, my darling Applejack, 
She breathed, getting to her feet with difficulty and pony-hugging her Applejack by putting her neck over her friend's and nuzzling her cheek. You saved my life! Applejack's eyes flashed with anger. But then a flush of overwhelming relief washed over her and she softened. They were safe. She pulled out of the hug and smiled at the grateful unicorn pony. Shucks, Rarity, she replied. Twarn't nothing at all. She lowered her eyes in modesty, but she opened them when she heard Rarity shriek. Applejack! Rarity cried. Oh. Well, let me try that again. Applejack! Rarity cried. Your hat! It's gone! My hat? Applejack lifted a hoof and felt her head all over. Rarity was right! The animator skipped a frame! My hat! Oh. My hat! My- Oh, damn it. My hat! <laughs> can't- can't say that. My hat. Applejack burst into tears and Rarity looked at her in shock. She'd never seen the Earth Pony so upset. My hat! It's gone! I've gone and lost it! I can't get the accent right. Oh my dear, rar 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 Rarity. Oh my dear, Rarity. I'll make you a new one as soon as we get back to Ponyville. Don't you worry about... You don't understand, cried Applejack. That was my pappy's hat, she sobbed. The last time I saw him alive, he took it off his head and gave it to me. And he said... This is yours now, my little Applebucker. Keep this ear's hat safe, and don't forget that your pappy loved you more than anything else in the world. Rarity's eyes welled up, but then they grew steely. She shook the tears from her eyes and jerked her head out of the wet saddlebags. I'll find your hat, darling, she said, galloping away at full speed downstream along the beach. Wait, Rarity, Applejack shouted out to her, but the unicorn pony didn't stop. That silly filly's gonna do something crazy. I just know it. By the time she'd caught up, Rarity had spotted Applejack's hat floating in the river. It was almost invisible, but it was her hat all right. Rarity stopped and stabbed her horn into the air. Purple azure energy sparkled along it, and in the river the hat was surrounded in the same light. But it quickly flickered and faded. It's too far away, said Rarity in frustration. Rarity, don't do nothing si- But the unicorn pony had already leapt into the river and was paddling towards the hat. Oh, pony feathers, why don't you ever listen to me? Applejack galloped up the beach, keeping alongside her. Rarity was right behind the hat now, and purple magic once again sprang to life along her horn. This time, the glow remained strong, and with difficulty, she lifted the hat out of the water and floated it across to Applejack on the shore. Once the glow flickered, and Rarity almost dropped it, once the glow flickered, and Rarity almost dropped it, but she bit her lip, squeezed her eyes shut, and with a final burst of magic, the hat at last made it to the riverbank. Applejack grabbed it in her mouth and flung it far from the water, for she could see that Rarity was exhausted and barely able to keep her head above water. Then the unicorn pony suddenly stopped swimming and slipped under the surface. Applejack gasped and leapt into the river, and in moments was next to where she'd last seen her friend. She took a deep breath and dived down, searching with her mouth and for forehooves for Rarity in the black, swirling water. An age later, her lungs burned and she was forced to surface again, but with desperate sucking in of air, she straightaway dived down again, and this time, she found her. With no saddlebags to grab this time, Applejack had Rarity's curly tail in her mouth, and painfully, she dragged her sopping, unconscious friend from the water. Oh, Rarity, Applejack muttered, wiping the water from the unicorn pony's face. What have you gone and done to yourself? You crazy little filly! She put her cheek to her friend's mouth. Rarity wasn't breathing. Applejack didn't hesitate, but at once she took a deep breath put her lips against Rarity's pale blue ones, and breathed out. Breathe, darn you! Breathe! Don't give up on me, Rarity! Breathe! Applejack st stepped back and looked at her friend. She lay there, unmoving in the dark, the rain falling about her. New tears burst out in Applejack's eyes. No. Oh, Celestia, please, no, she whispered. But then, suddenly bananas, thousands of them. But then, Rarity groaned. So soft, Applejack thought she must have imagined it. Rarity? She brought her face close and nuzzled the unicorn pony's cheek. Rarity groaned louder and started to cough. The water suddenly dribbled from between her lips. Applejack quickly turned onto her side and held her as wave after wave of river poured out of her mouth. Ew. Oh, thanks, Celestia, said Applejack, patting Rarity on her back to help dislodge that la the last of the water she had breathed in. You're breathing again. You're okay. Applejack's top lip quivered. For a minute there, I, I thought I'd lost you, she whispered. Rarity looked up at Applejack groggily. The unicorn pony's beautiful indigo mane, wet and tangled, was plastered to her face and neck. 
and her coat was caked in mud and river weeds. It broke Applejack's heart to see Rarity in such a state, but then the unicorn pony smiled at her. Darling, she whispered, there's no way I'd go anywhere looking like this. <laughs> Does it hurt anywhere, Rarity? Applejack asked in concern. Do you, do you need anything? Applejack, Rarity looked up at her friend and whispered, Do you have a mirror? And then Applejack at last allowed herself to burst into a tears. With Rarity too weak to help it, it took a long time for Applejack to set up the tent. Most of the pegs were lying on the bottom of the river, so she was forced to collect heavy river rocks and roll them into the edges of the tarpaulin to keep, to keep the material in place. The wind was growing wilder with every passing moment, tearing at the tent and threatening to blow it into the air. From the dryness of the nook under the outcropping, Rarity watched Applejack struggling in the rain. Applejack had the had wrapped up, wrapped her up, and all that was left of the outfit she'd brought with her. The rest were flowing downstream somewhere, never to be seen or admired by any pony ever again. The outer layer of Rarity's warm cocoon was the exquisitely sequ sequined party dress she'd bought with her in case there was some kind of social event after the rodeo. She chuckled grimly. If the gentle colts in Cold Springs n could see her now, the muddy river had gone into her saddlebags and ruined it. Half the sequins were missing, and it was stained with mud beyond repair. In a few moments, the gorgeous creation she had been so proud of, gazing on it as it glittered on its dressmaker's doll in her boutique, had become little more than a, silth than a filthy rag. Rarity held back tears. All of those days of hard work, sewing an each individual sequin in on perfectly straight lines, wasted. How tragic. In her weakened state, Rarity felt absolutely useless. She tried to get up and help Applejack earlier, but it was too much for her heart to stand. Watching the Earth Pony working so sto stoically, so selflessly, in that cold, dark maelstrom of, a wind, of wind and rain. But the sudden wave of weakness had set her entire body trembling, and she'd slumped back onto the ground. Applejack had galloped up to her, her eyes furious, berating her. You try and move yourself one more time, little missy, and I'll come and roll some rocks on top of you as well. Rarity had lowered her eyes. I'm so sorry, Applejack. I just feel so terrible that I can't be of any assistance to you, darling. She sniffled. And all of this is my fault. If only I'd been more careful deciding where to put those big, clumsy hooves of mine. Now don't you worry yourself about that, Rarity, Applejack replied. The unicorn pony's distress had touched her. It was just an accident, is all. It could have happened to any pony. It wouldn't have happened to you, Rarity had replied softly so that Applejack couldn't hear her as she walked back into the rain. You always know the right thing to do. Applejack rolled the final rock into place. There, she said in triumph, even wearing her oilskin coat and hat. She was sopping wet, and she took herself over to a corner of the nook away from where Rarity was sitting and shook herself dry. Now let's get out of this wind and get warmed up. Rarity nodded. Even wrapped in her so many layers, the wind was cutting into her, and her bones ached and her teeth chattered with the cold. How unfortunate. The two ponies crawled under the tent flap and into the dry, dark warmth inside. It was still daylight, but the black clouds of the storm blocking out the sun, it was as if it was the middle of the night inside the tent. Applejack flicked on a torch with her mouth and placed it in the corner of the tent. Its pale yellow light made huge shadows of two ponies against one side of the tent, and Rarity's eyes suddenly lit up with delight when she saw them. Even wrapped up in rags, I have such a svelte silhouette, she beamed, striking a pose. And Applejack, oh, just look at you, she pointed at Applejack's silhouette, magnified on the wall of the tent. You know, my dear, your cowboy hat really is so charming. Its wide brim is simply the perfect accessory for your ponytail. It bounces it so well. Applejack lay down, exhausted, and watched Rarity as she tried different glamorous poses, her silhouette mirroring them. She was tired, and part of her was still angry at the unicorn pony, but she looked down at her own shadow, wearing her pappy's cowboy hat. The memory of Rarity leaping into the river to save it without hesitation made her the anger melt away as quickly as it had come. Applejack closed her eyes for a moment and without realizing it dozed off. When she opened her eyes again, she saw that Rarity was curled up beside her, fast asleep. Aww. The unicorn pony had earlier washed the mud and weeds off herself as best she could with rainwater, but her coat was still smudged with dirt and her mane was all clumped together in places. Applejack smiled at her sleeping face, the heavy eyelashes fluttering slightly as she dreamed, and she licked the unicorn pony's wet cheek. Even after all their adventure today, Rarity looked so beautiful. Applejack sighed and cuddled against her for warmth. Oh, so cute. Oh, you're going, you're going to have a cute relationship. Oh. 
And just how in tarnation can you smell so sweet after sliding down a mountainside and wading through a river of mud? You smell just like you left one of those fancy spas, she chuckled. Like flowers and soap and sandalwood all bundled up together. Unicorn magic. Must be. And the rain continued to patter and hiss outside, and the thunder rolled and growled. Applejack fell asleep as well. When Applejack awoke, the light inside the tent was the dull gray of early dawn. Those Pegasus ponies must have finally got their act together, she thought in relief. The first event of the rodeo was scheduled for the early afternoon, and with a bit of luck she and some determined hiking, they'd be able to get to Colt Springs in time. She looked down at Rarity, swaddled in her layers of clothes like a baby. She was still fast asleep. Applejack snorted in annoyance. Come on, Rarity, it's not like you to need any beauty sleep. She nudged the unicorn pony with a gentle hoof. Time to rise and shine. If you don't get up, we won't have any time to find those berries you were after. Rarity moaned a little. She still didn't wake up. Applejack frowned and came closer. Rarity's face was pale, and the area around her horn was covered in sweat. You okay, Rarity? Applejack placed a hoof on the unicorn pony's forehead. She was burning up! Bum, bum, bum! Applejack straight away started to peel the layers of water-stained clothes, pulling them off of Rarity with her teeth. It was just like unwrapping a mummy, but that image didn't seem at all funny to Applejack at the moment. She'd seen terrible things that could happen with a f high fever. You know... This makes me think. Is it really such a good idea to keep yourself wrapped up in clothes like that when you when you just got out of a river like and you have all those blankets and everything? That would just keep all the crap from the river on you instead of it drying up. You know what I'm saying? Like if she had not been in I mean I know she needs to be warm, but if she had not been in any blankets whatsoever, then maybe she wouldn't be sick right now. I don't know. I don't know. She remembered her pappy, and those long last days confined to his bed at Sweet Apple Acres. He'd look just like Rarity did now, pale and sweaty, and so weak. Her pappy had always been such a huge and robust stallion. Big Macintosh was a spitting image of how he'd looked in his younger days, dragging his plow out in the fields in the broiling sun, the sweat of the heat and the labor beating on his flanks and withers. Applejack remembered how she used, how she used to skip behind him, planting the apple seeds in, from her little saddlebags, and all the while he'd pull the plow and look back at his daughter now with pride and love in his big dark eyes. And when he'd fallen ill, the weight and muscle had fallen away from his frame, and he'd become so thin and fragile that Applejack and Big Macintosh had to help him into bed, and he'd never and he'd felt no heavier than the single bushel of apples. Don't worry, little sis, Big Macintosh had told her one afternoon as she sat crying on the porch of the homestead, as so often and she had in those terrible days. Pappy'll be fine. He just needs to get his strength back. Yup. But Applejack had seen the tiny glimmer of doubt in her big brother's eyes, and she'd known at that moment that Pappy wasn't ever going to get better. Rarity was unclothed now, lying on her side, her chest rising slowly as she breathed shallowly and with difficulty. Applejack nuzzled her, but she didn't respond. Tears welled up in the corner of Applejack's eyes, but she angrily shook them away. What you doing, you dumb rabbit? Crying like a filly that stubbed her hoof. She rifled through the sandalbags. Finally finding the water canister, she opened it and put it next to Rarity's mouth, but the unicorn pony didn't react, so she gently eased her head up and let some of the water trickle down into her mouth. Rarity coughed, but after a little while, she started to swallow. That's a good filly, said Applejack. Applejack? Rarity opened her eyes and looked at her friend. Her pupils were unfocused, and she seemed half asleep still. Applejack's here, Rarity, replied Applejack. She sighed in relief. Don't you worry. Applejack, I... Now don't you try and talk, Rarity. You got an awful high fever. You need to rest up. Else, she tipped the little remaining water in the canister into Rarity's mouth as she drank it. <coughs> Rarity coughed again. So thirsty, Applejack. Applejack nodded. Of course you are, she replied. You awful dehydrated. She stood up and went into the flap of the tent. Just you wait a short while. I'll be back soon. Just gotta go find some fresh water. 